Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Erebor. It's been a while since we've been back to the Dwarven Fortress, to that mountain citadel. But as you can see here, as we fly by Dale, we've got a lot to do still. The town's complete, and the forest around it is completely finished, but we're leaving Dale and going inside the mountain itself. We're going to start building Erebor, and you've seen me already clear out a room inside and construct the doorway. But right now, we're going to follow the river all the way to the front door of this mountain fortress, dive inside, and get finishing the first room of Erebor. Now, we built a lot inside here. We built the roof and some pillars. We gave it a lava floor, some dwarven heads, and some decoration, and shaped the room slightly. But there's still a lot to do in this room. We've got to get it looking like a true dwarven fortress. It's got to have walkways and plinths. Also, we're going to remove that lake of lava at the bottom. At the moment, it's there to produce a lot of light for us. But the truth is, we don't need that much light. Right, and so the first thing I need inside the first room is a stairway leading down to a crossroads that can take us to the separate rooms and separate areas of Erebor. So I built this pretty simple staircase out of stone brick. Not much to say about it. I lit it up with torches. And then extended the stone slabs from outside into the room itself. Now, we accidentally leaked in some water from outside, and that made a bit of an obsidian mess on the floor, but we can fix that later, and we're going to remove the lava anyway at some point, so it's no worries. Now, I put down the skeleton of the stairs with this dark stone brick and bordered it with lightstone brick. And now I'm going to use quartz and quartz slabs inside this room as the stairways and the pathways. And what that does is it breaks up the plain look of stone brick and gives us a bit of contrast. Now I extended the walkway a bit into the middle of the room. We'd come down a few levels, but we flattened out just before we got to these lava spouts. I built some stone brick rings around those lava spouts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have those lava rivers kind of just split into like a, an upside down U and create a way for you to walk underneath the lava to get to where you're going. Now I started doing that with these quartz blocks you see here. And that's the simple idea of it. The lava splits into two streams. But the white looked a bit crappy, so I switched to stone brick. and capped off the lava flow underneath it as well to keep the place looking tidy. And then once that doorway, once that lava bridge was complete, I continued the walkway all the way to the wall and then boarded the walkway with some stone brick and added in some quartz half blocks along these pathways. Now, the walkways need a little more detail, so I used stone brick steps to create this nice little crenellation pattern that you see here. And this is a theme that we're going to stick with throughout the rest of the building, throughout the rest of the uh, the rest of the indoor areas and walkways of, of Erebor. They were quite tricky to get right, but once they were in place, they were pretty easy to add and to replicate around the other walkways and stairways. And again, filling in the paths again with these quartz half blocks and steps. and then copy and pasting one side to the other to make it easier. Now, lighting is a real issue down here underground. At the moment, we don't have too many troubles because we've basically put torches everywhere and we've made the whole floor lava. But as you can see, as I construct this doorway, and the detail around this doorway, I'm going to be destroying those torches as I put down blocks. And that makes it hard to see what I'm doing. Now, I've used black wool inside the door because it doesn't lead to anywhere yet. We have to build the room that it leads to. I added some decoration to the doorway and some red fence posts that would later become cobblestone walls. And now you see here, I built a dwarven face as a pattern on this wall, but I wasn't happy with it. So I came back and I thought, 
What else is dwarven? Well, why not hammers? So I decided to build a design motif on the wall of hammers. And you can see here a simple looking hammer etched into the wall and then embossed on the edges with light stone brick, slabs and steps. And once the hammer was complete, it was time to copy that and paste it next to the design and mirror that design along the wall, as well as adding support struts along the ceiling to make the room look a little bit less square. The biggest problem that I have with this room at the moment is that it's basically just a large square, a large cube that I hollowed out. But we don't want it looking like a true cube. We need it to be a bit more detailed, a bit more etched and a bit less kind of uniform. But as you can see, I'm replicating that hammer effect, just copying that motif. And I'm adding this in between the hammers, a nice little lava pool decoration to really kind of pop out of the wall a little bit and to add some natural lighting or kind of almost natural lighting. And then again, digging inside the wall and adding some upside down stone bricks as decoration as well. And you can see I copied that motif, that design and pasted it around the other side. And then I got to work building the supports for the walkway. Because at the moment, the walkway just hangs in the middle of the air. And that looks kind of silly. When you think about it, nothing, nothing holding it up. It's made out of pure brick. It would fall into the lava and it would just be destroyed within seconds. So what we need to do is we need to add some support struts. Now I wanted to do this in a two tier way. The first tier at the top, holding up the walkway, would be held up by many pillars, as you can see here, two by two. But then underneath that, I wanted to roughly half the number of pillars holding up that level of the walkway. So you get a similar kind of arch effect that you might have seen on the Evil Fortress. And again, using Darkstone Brick to just replicate this pattern over and over again. Once you have one pillar correct, you can basically copy that design and paste it to the next. But I accidentally used Lightstone Brick here, so I switched that back to Darkstone Brick. And then I thought about putting in a design motif to make the pillars look a little bit less even. So I added these upside down stone brick steps you see here. But I also wanted, oh, and there's me blocking off some of that lava flow as it drips down. I added some cobblestone wall. And cobblestone wall is, is a kind of, it's a nice material to work with. It seems to work well with the stone brick that I've got here. Now I added these kind of small designs to the pillars. And I wanted to change it up a bit. So I had the designs on the pillars slope downwards towards the middle. Now again, copy and pasting this design on the wall to the lower section of the wall as well. Of course, copy and pasting like that meant I copied the doorway as well. So there was a lot of trimming needed to be done to take care of that and to trim it up and make it look nice and neat. And to reattach the walkway to the wall. But once I'd done that side, I could literally copy and paste the entire side of the room over to the other side. Now this took a long time to get right because I was flipping it and flopping it and rotating it all kinds of ways. And a lot of the time it just messed it up completely. But when I finally got it in the right position, I came back, finished up the areas that didn't quite copy correctly. There was some small light repair work that needed doing. But once that was done, the sides of the walls were pretty much complete. And as you can see, I copy and pasted also the pillar design along the bottom. That now extends to the other side of the room as well. Now again, having to add and remove torches as I build along areas. At the moment, this place is just filled with torches and with lava. And the flowing lava will remain, but I'm probably going to take out all of the torches and the lava at the bottom and work out a more natural way to light the room. When you build on the ground like this, a lot of the design and detail and, and basically the look of the room comes from how you've lit it up. There's going to be a lot of areas that are going to be dark, nooks and crannies that you can't quite see that give the illusion of depth just by being dark. So now again I continued the walkway along all the way through the middle of the room to the end of the room. Adding some crenellations and details here and there with the quartz blocks, the quartz steps and the stone brick steps. And now it was time to build out some struts leaning out of the wall at the back. I wanted a bit more depth and detail 
to extend down to the floor. So I built these kind of like ridges that come out of the wall and act as kind of pseudo supports for the room as well. And it's just a basic design of dark stone brick, some cobblestone walls, and some light stone brick. But as you can see here, I go downwards in a second, and I fill in the support strut with more dark stone brick. Now I made the middle out of light stone brick, and gave it a dark stone brick border, and I added some layers of detail with dark stone brick as well. Now in retrospect, this was a bit of a waste of time because you really won't see a lot of this, but it's really rewarding to know that in your build, even when you can't see it, there's a lot of detail, a lot of fine detail work that's gone into the actual building itself. Even if it isn't seen from most people, you can know that, hey, there's actually a lot more detail into this than, than, than meets the eye. So you can see me here etching that pattern into this plinth, adding a few cobblestone walls here and there to add a little bit of detail, but not too much because I like the feel of the, the indented, the kind of embossed feel that you get at the moment with, with the two layers of pattern. And now with that support strut built, and with me happy with it, I copied it twice more over on the right, and then copied all three over again to the left side of the room to keep everything symmetrical. A bit of repair work where I had to build up with dark stone brick. And there we go, oh, as night falls, and we slowly loom into the fortress. You can see what we've done so far. This, the entrance even still needs a lot of work. And there's lots to be done still. There needs to be more detail added to the bottom of the room. We need to get rid of that lava. We need to construct the door at the end, of course. But you can see here the motif and the design that we've laid into the wall. It looks great. It looks really cool. And these pillars as well. That design is complete. But we need support struts along the middle as well to hold up the middle of the walkway. These support struts at the side as well, they're looking pretty cool. And what I've done is I've copied those to the front of the room, underneath the entry stairway, to just keep things symmetrical. So next episode we'll have to build a door, decide which rooms we're going to lead into, and, and where we go next. But we're almost there, I think there's about three more rooms to complete. The throne room, the forge, the giant smeltery, and the treasure room. So until next time guys, take care.